Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. The weekend is here and the Declan Rice story is still going on, isn't it? I think it's going to be going on until it comes to a conclusion. Whether that's Rice signing a new deal or he, he leaves West Ham or the transfer window shuts. One of the three things is going to happen first. And when it does, I think that's when we can put an end to this story. But as it stands, yesterday I did the video and it was based on rumours yesterday. It was based on reports by Matt Law and Jacob Steinberg. And to be fair, in the video I said these two have a lot of credibility when it comes to sort of information from West Ham so I believed it I believed that Vice had rejected two contract offers now since then we haven't had confirmation from the club or Declan Rice but we're not going to get that but we've probably had the next best thing which is anyone with credibility when it comes to West Ham information West Ham news or West Ham sources they've basically confirmed that Rice has rejected two contracts from West Ham now there's slightly contrasting reports some reports are suggesting that he's not being offered the same wage as Yarmolenko, who's currently the highest paid player at West Ham. And that, that's perhaps why he's rejecting the deal, because he wants to be you know, paid, paid the most, because he's deemed the most important player at the club. He's worth £100 million, and he wants his wage to reflect that. Um, and there's also reports suggesting that he hasn't sorry, he hasn't been paid that offer that. And there's other reports suggesting he's been offered a wage that makes him the highest paid player at West Ham, should he sign it. Now, I'm not going to go into too much into his financial offer or whatever because I don't think that type of information should be made public. I think that's between the club and Declan Rice and I think when that gets leaked, I think it sways fans. It either turns fans against the club and says, hang on, that's not enough, pay more. Or it turns the fans against the players and says, hang on a minute, mate, that's a lot of money. And it was very much something that happened with Declan Rice the first time he had his contract when Pellegrini was here. I felt that the contract got leaked and I felt a lot of fans, some fans did sort of suggest, well hang on a minute Declan, that's a lot of money for someone who's only just broken the first tee and so on and so forth. And I thought the club played a blinder by leaking that contract information through a website because it did its job, which was dictate the narrative. And I think this is happening again now. I think it depends what side of the fence you sit on, whether you're Team Declan or your Team West Ham in this, or who you get your information from, because I think the headlines suggest it sets a narrative, doesn't it? Where Rice rejects bumper deal or West Ham offer bumper deal to Declan Rice or something like that. You know what I'm trying to say. Um, there's, a, there's a narrative there. And I'm going to do my best to remain impartial here because I think the offer from the club, if it is what it's believed to be, I think it's a fair offer, to be honest with you. Should he be the highest paid player at the club? Probably. Um, but I think it's a decent offer the club have given him. But at the same time, he is our most important player and if we're going to sort of suggest that he's worth 100 million and then not offer him a wage that sort of reflects that it's sort of like you can't have it two ways is he worth 100 million or is he not so i can see both sides of the coin i'm actually quite torn on this one and maybe that's why it's easy to remain a bit impartial as i go through the video you might think you're not impartial on this but i'll do my best but anyway i think we've got two options here i think you either give him the money he wants should he want a new contract and a certain wage or I think you have to look to sell them essentially because I think doing neither is dangerous and I go back to the the clip with Slavin Bilic on BT Sports talking about the Dimitri Payet situation this is a while after Slav had left last time he was a pundit on BT Sports and Jake asked him you know lots of West Ham fans are tweeting in about Dimitri Payet you know what can you tell us about Demi and all that and B Bilic basically said he went away with France played the likes of Paul Pogba, Champions League players, came back to West Ham and we had two options. Either A, we give him a new contract, more money, or B, we sell him. And we did neither. If Village was diplomatic, as you'd expect, remained classy and basically said he could understand why the chairman wanted to do it because he only had a contract, a new deal six months prior, didn't want to give him a new deal, and then it resulted in it. Now, whether you believe that's the reason Dimitri Payet left or not, is not what my point is here. My point is, this is a, I feel like we're in the same situation here with Declan Rice to some extent. We either pay him, we give him what he wants, we get him a new deal, we keep him happy, or we look to sell him. Because I think doing neither is where it gets a little bit dangerous. This is where you basically push Declan towards the door, essentially. Now, from what I'm aware, Declan Rice behind the scenes is fantastic and he's unlikely he hasn't handed in a transfer request he won't hand in a transfer request however he's open to moving that's always been the case but he does have that thing with Ireland going on in the background which is hard to ignore he did <clears throat> pardon me he did switch from allegiance from Ireland to England 
And that's where sometimes it is hard to think, well, could he do it to West Ham? I'd like to think he wouldn't hand in a transfer request to force a move through. But if push comes to shove, he's got to do what's best for him. He's got to do what's best for his career. And that is maybe another year at West Ham, but long term, that is at a other club, a bigger and better club than West Ham, where they're competing for the Premier League. They're playing in Champions League. Now, I've seen some people, I've been trying to read the comments of the videos, and I'll do the same here and on social media. Some people have suggested that if he remains with West Ham, has another solid season and competes in the Europa League, that might add value to what he's worth in transfer market. And I disagree with that, actually. I actually feel that Kermais' value is as high as it will be for a long time, or as certainly as high as it can get at West Ham. I'm not sure it can go too much, because at the minute he's club captain, well, he's not club captain, he's sort of, match day captain you know what I mean this is similar to Swansea's, Swansea when they had Ashley Williams was sort of the team captain but the club captain was actually Gary Monk it's just that he was injured or didn't play but Monk was the club captain Williams was the team captain I think we've got that situation here at West Ham now where Rice is captain most weeks but in the training ground Mark Noble's captain so he's as you know, captain as you're going to get and um, one of our he's our best player I do think he's our best player I think he's our most important player he's becoming the, one of the first names on the England team sheet and during the Euros he showed he can compete and win his personal battles against players that play for Real Madrid and Bayern Munich there's every chance he's going to go on and win the Euros with England I'm not sure his value can go much more while at West Ham I don't think playing in the Europa League personally adds much to his value so it shows you can do it against and with, this is with the greatest respect to teams like Real Betis or Sporting Braga or Fenerbahce I think he's already done that he's done it in the Premier League I think playing against like some Man City man you carry far more pedigree than playing against the Europa League teams there's not much teams in the Europa League I think well if you can do it against them he'll add value hopefully what I'm trying to say is make sense I don't think his value is going to get greater by another further year at West Ham I think the only way to increase what his transfer market value is at the minute is by doing it in the Champions League. And you can't do that with West Ham. So whatever it is, and this is the big important discussion point now, isn't it? What is Declan Rice worth? What could West Ham sell him for? Or should West Ham sell him for? You know, Chelsea are partly rumoured to buy him at 70 million. West Ham's price tag is 100 million. There's a big price difference there. I mean, 7 million and 10 million, you think that's all right, a deal can get done. West Ham are trying to buy a player for 7 million and the Sound Club wanted 10 million. You'd, you'd expect it to get done for 8, 9 million. It's not quite the same when you add a zero on the end, is it? Between 70 and 100, there's a 30 million gap there. It's a, they're some way apart. But he's only worth what someone's willing to pay. If Chelsea are only willing to pay 70 million and we sell him for 70 million, that's all he's worth. But I've always said, I've always felt, and I still believe this, that every player is for sale in football. Every single player in the world of football is for sale. They've all got their price. And the price is what the club will sell him for. But what he's worth is what a club will buy him for. And there's two different things. What he's worth and his price are two completely different things. It's like if you go buy a car, the garage might have it on the court for eight grand. But if you're only willing to pay six grand, then what's it worth? Well, it's worth what you're willing to pay. But what's the price? Eight grand, what the seller wants, and I think that's the situation we're in with Declan Rice at the minute. Where we're rallying about 100 million, which I think is correct, by the way. I don't, I'm not poo pooing West Ham's price here at all. And I keep going back to Leicester City with Harry Maguire. You have to price the player up what he's worth to your club. And if Chelsea, Man U, Man City look at him and think, well, that's not a fair price, they're probably correct. He probably isn't worth 100 million to those clubs. Declan Rice probably isn't worth 100 million to Chelsea. Tough. We're not discussing that. We're discussing what he's worth to West Ham. And if we say he's 100 million, he's 100 million. The reason I think there's two things sort of gone under discussed, if you like, with all this, because, and I am guilty of it, I've just spent nine minutes discussing the finances for Declan Rice to sign his contract. But there's two things. One is ambition of the football club. And in the, in, I read Jacob Steinberg's article this morning. And one thing that perhaps has gone under the radar, because it's at the very end, it basically said that Declan Rice hasn't been given insurances over West Ham's transfer budget to push on from finishing sixth. Now, I guess some people might say, well, what's it to him? What's he worrying about the transfer budget for? But that just reflects the ambition of Declan Rice. He wants to see West Ham, if this is true. But bear in mind, the rest of the article's true, you know, about Rice rejecting two contracts, so on and so forth. I fail to see why that bit would 
I, I fail to see why Jacob Stein would, would make something like that up and just throw it in the article. You can't have 90% of truth in um, a lie for the final part, which is insignificant compared to the rest of it. So I, I believe, to some extent, that Rice is probably wondering what West Ham's ambitions are for next season. And if he hasn't been given assurances over the transfer budget, I could understand why he'd be a bit worried. Because he's going to want the club to match his own personal ambition, which is Champions League football. If we were in the Europa League, is that going to convince Rice to say, I've never been sure it would. While I think it attracts certain players, I'm not sure it would convince someone like Declan to stay, because Declan wants Champions League football. However... James Tarkowski is a player that wants European football. There's a difference in the mentality and the ambition of the two footballers there. So keeping Declan is different to attracting other players. And that's concerning if Declan Rice has sort of asked the board or the club or someone or Moyes and said, what is the transfer budget? How much are we going to spend to build on what we've just achieved? And the answer was something that disappointed him. I can understand why... It might put Declan off a little bit, actually, committing to the club. And this is the second point I think has gone under, under discussed, if you like. I've seen some people in the comments say it though, and on social media. And that is, if he signs a new deal at West Ham, he ties himself in even further. Because when you sign a contract in the Premier League, you have to sign at least one additional year on your contract. If a player's got three years to go, you can't give him a new three-year contract or 20 grand a week extra you have to give him an extra one year. There has to be an extra year applied to the length of the contract in order to get improved terms. And that's the ruling. Because we were in that situation with Marko Natovic a little bit. You know, Marko wanted an improved deal, but for West Ham to give him one, we had to add an additional year on. And he was already tied to the club to, to when he was 33, 34 years of age. So this would have taken him to West Ham at 35 on 120 grand a week or whatever. But with Declan, if he signs a new deal, it becomes minimum a four-year contract and that's a long time to tie yourself in we're seeing he's looking at his England teammate Harry Kane trying to get out get out of Tottenham at the minute Kane wants to leave we everyone knows that he's told us Kane wants to leave but he's going to struggle because he's got a long-term deal at Spurs and Spurs are slapping a valuation on his head that other clubs are hesitant to pay he's sort of tied in at Tottenham Zaha at Crystal Palace every summer sort of twerks for a move away no one stumps up the money because his contract at Crystal Palace is quite lengthy um, and then often transfer window shuts and he get, he sometimes gets rewarded with an improved deal to stay at Crystal Palace to keep him happy um, so it's difficult for Declan it's difficult for West Ham as well I think it's perhaps a bit more straightforward for the club because at the end of the day when you are signing a player every year less on his contract if Declan Rice only had a one year deal to go what do you think he'd be worth 40 50 million so that contract that length of contract isn't necessarily keeping the player at the club for that long because if he wants to go he will go regardless of how long he's on his deal but what 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 it does do it secures the valuation of the player secures the price that you can demand from those buying clubs but anyway I'm going to shut up now. I was going to promote Patreon. I completely forgot. Uh, nice one, Gio. But this is the best time to join up. If you want to join up to our Patreon, uh, patreon.com forward slash hammers chat. The link is in the description below in the pinned comments. It's the best time because you get charged at the start of every month. So obviously you sign up at the start of the month, you get a whole month, and then you get charged again. Whereas you sign up at the very end, you get a week, and then you get charged again kind of thing. Um, so yeah, at the minute, obviously, Patreon content is lesser than usual because there's no West Ham games. However, myself and Gons are doing a mug of tea next week, which is like uh, a more laid-back personal cup of tea edition because we started discussing the West Ham transfer market stuff the other day on a video for the forum channel. And it was one of them. We could have kept talking for about an hour or something. So we said, right, let's park it and we'll do a mug of tea. So we'll be doing that for the the patrons. But anyway, if you want to know more, the link is in the description. Um, please... Thank you to everybody that signed up and stuck with us. We appreciate the support. It's helping us do this as our job, which is pretty mental, really. But I'm going to disappear. Um, if you enjoyed this video, drop a like on it. Subscribe for new. Please leave the comments below because I'm around a lot today to read the comments and stuff. I read all the ones yesterday. I'll be replying to some, and I'll be replying to a lot of these comments today as well. So get your comments in because I might do a video next week about sort of your opinions on the deck and rice thing as well because I, I like i like to discuss it sometimes right i'm shutting up now i'm going enjoy your weekend and i'll catch you in a bit